to make our jewelry. Another, I just want to today, I just wanted to show you all the things that we can use, but that you might have some of these things sitting around your house on old pieces of jewelry or or someone, a friend has something broken that they don't want to, they don't want to use anymore. Uh, you might be able to use that. Um, I get beads in all different sizes. And these are some of the tiniest beads. And I usually use those on the end of, uh, of a piece of jewelry. And this is called the crimping bead. And we do that with, because this is the bead that holds all the beads on the string. So this is an important component and you'll see that in your kit or um, if you need to, I'm sure that you can see an online site that will show you what the crimping beads are and how they're used. Some of them are like a cylinder and others are round like balls. And these happen to be balls. And I don't think I have any cylinders right now. I've been working with the balls for a bit. So they go on, they're called crimp beads or crimp circles, and they go on the end of the jewelry. And that's included in the kit um, at Walmart as well. There's also um, barrels. And barrels have been around for a long time. Barrels are the bead ends that screw and unscrew. And I really like those because they're pretty tough and they're pretty sturdy. Um, and they're easy to use on either end. They have holes. And so you just thread it through. You just thread it through and tie a knot and start your bead. When you finish with your design, you thread the other end, tie a knot and you're done. And they're called barrel clasps. And this one, they're gold finished, which means they're not gold. They just have some sort of gold paint sprayed on them because this is, we're all doing costume jewelry. We're not doing like um, gold or anything like that. If we find silver findings and they're inexpensive and you like them, they're good, but they're not mandatory. They are not mandatory. But the barrel clasp is a really good clasp for a beginner. Um, with the other clasps, you have to use the tools to open and close the uh, finding to make sure that the string stays on. And it takes a little bit of skill, but we're gonna learn that as well. But if you have barrel clasp on jewelry, save that as well. Um, I wish I could see you because what I would like for you to do for the next class is to pull out all the pieces you can find and be able to um, show them and, and, and talk to me about what you would like to do with them or ask questions about them. Um, we'll see if we can work on something like that since we can't really meet in person. So I have one more example of a finding. And this is a split ring. And you're really, you've probably seen these before. The large version are what put keychains together um, and key rings, but we actually use these for jewelry sometimes, especially um, necklaces and the long necklaces or bracelets. And we use these as well. And they have the little opening just like your key ring would have. And you just twist it around and, and boom, you have you have the uh, the ring right on your piece of jewelry. Um, I'm going to tell you that when you're using, when you're making your dinner, and you're using your jars of sauce, um, any kind of any kind of container, glass jar or plastic jar, with a screw top lid, you're going to want to start washing those and setting those aside because these little cases are really nice. And I just, I've had these for a long time, but they don't hold enough, um, especially when it comes to beads. And you can see that if you got 
three or four of these. There, there's no way it's going to fit in that little thing, but it will fit nicely in an old mayonnaise jar, an old gravy jar, any kind of sauce jar. Start saving your jars. Um, get yourself a felt tip marker when you get your beads. Um, you can get a piece of clear tape or painter's tape, tape on the outside of your jar, the name of the bead. Because the one mistake that I have learned is the only name on the bead is on this tag. And once you lose that tag, you're hard to find, you're hard to identify the bead. So put your label on, take the bead name and the measurement and just write it on your piece of tape, put your tape on your jar. Um, jars are especially good for stacking up your thread and your wire. So you can store them in a jar, put the lid on, you knock it over, it's not gonna roll all over the floor. Um, we use tools that we have to uh, hold on to our beads. Um, sometimes I've even used like empty, rinsed empty soda bottles and put the beads inside um, so that you can keep up with them. Small jars, uh, baby food jars are perfect for findings. Um, you can even take baby food jars and hot glue them on a piece of wood and have yourself a finding stand. So use some of the things, repurpose what you have at home. It's gonna be much more enjoyable. You're gonna feel so much pride in having not only made your tools, but making your jewelry. And hopefully we will be able to market these to people um, and, and start you your own little jewelry business. Um, there's, a, there's a lot to be done. Um, there's a lot that you can do. And I am more than willing to teach you how to do it. I really think that I've showed you everything that I have for this class. And hopefully um, we'll meet again soon. Hopefully um, you can uh, reach out to me and I'm going to write my email address down so that if you have any questions, I can try to answer them um, by email until we can actually see each other face to face. So let me see, do I have a pen? Grab a pen, I'm so sorry. All right, I'm going to write down my email address. Give you time to get a pen and some paper. This is my email address. I'm hoping you can see it. Um, Dolores, my first name, and my email address is vintage, V-I-N-T-A-G-E, 845 at yahoo.com. Again, it's V-I-N-T-A-G-E, 8 four five at yahoo.com feel free to email me ask me questions if you want to send pictures of um, some of the jewelry you have you can do that as well as if you need me to give you a, a better idea of what the tools or any of the findings or the beads look like i am more than happy to do that for you um, it usually takes me about a day or so to get back to you um, if you email me because I, I do have um, my antiques business that I run as well. And I've been out of jewelry making for a couple of, about a year or so. 
And this is going to be fun for me as well as it is for you. I'm, I'm looking forward to putting all these pieces together and making some really nice jewelry. So it's been great talking to you. I hope you've enjoyed the class. Feel free to ask any question about the jewelry. If you wanna ask me about my experience or, or anything else, please feel free to do so. Um, Yariana knows how to get me by phone. And if there's uh, any questions you can ask me if you don't have access um, immediately to a computer or your phone charging or whatever it's doing, um, you can reach out to her as well. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I'm thrilled about meeting new friends and teaching them new things and hoping that you will be glad to work with me and be proud of the items that you make and you repair. Um, this is a skill that you can use for a lifetime. Um, it's been a long time since I've been in high school and high school is what started me making the jewelry and I've never stopped. I, I get a lot of joy out of it and we get some nice things. So I look forward to seeing you again soon. Um, stay safe, have a great week and we will talk next week. Thanks, bye.